Good morning. Welcome to worship and welcome to Dornu Cathedral. Whether visiting today or here often or joining in at home, we're glad you're here and I hope you feel God's loving presence around you as we worship. Some notices to share with you today. Um, the Daily Thoughts continue on YouTube and Facebook for those who want to connect in that way. Um, I'm keen to talk to anyone who'd like to explore becoming a member of the church. We have a clutch of people um, who are saying yes, and it looks differently for different people. Some people will be making a profession of faith, having never done that before. Others will be transferring from one congregation to another. So if there's anyone else in that position thinking about saying yes to Jesus and yes to this community here, then do um, speak to me. My details are on the service sheet. Um, no choir this week, a rest for you, maybe, maybe not, maybe you've got something more exciting. <laughs> um, the Deacon's Court will be on a Zoom meeting on Thursday the 14th of September at 7pm. You have the details um, from Ken already. There's an invitation to a Songs of Praise held by the Tain Churches on Sunday the 10th of September, so that's next Sunday at 3pm in Tain Parish Church, and that's to coincide with the Book Festival and to celebrate, um, well, one of the oldest books in the world, I guess. And then there's also an invitation to the launch of Church of Scotland Learning. You're asked to go to the website and to look at opportunities um, to explore the ministry that you have and that you can use um, in your local congregation and in the community. Um, there's an email address there, and you'll find details on the Church of Scotland website. There's a note about an event to mark the 250th anniversary of the voyage of the Nancy, a ship, a brig that set sail from Dornoch in the 18th century, carrying immigrants from Sutherland to America. There's an email address there if you'd like to go and listen to a talk about that. It's at Dornoch Beach Car Park. Um, I don't see a date, but I guess if you email, you'll find out. I have a feeling it's a Sunday afternoon this month, but I can't remember off the top of my head. And then the last one there is if you would like to join in the Presbytery Bible Study, which starts this coming Tuesday and is on Zoom. There's an invitation to email Faye, who's over there in the choir, um, and it's being led by Reverend Andrea Boyce, who's a minister of Durness and Kinloch Burvey, and the topic is Meeting Jesus. And I think that's it. I don't think I've missed anything out. These are the notices today. In the notes we sing, the questions we bring, our worship, our honest praise. In the words we dare, in the silence we share our worship, our honest praise. In the gifts we give, the lives we live, our worship, our honest praise. Let us pray. Mighty God, who are we that you would wait for the worship we offer? Who are we that you would turn your ear so as not to miss a single word we might say? Who are we that you would reach out whatever the cost to soothe what is sore in us? Lord, who are we that you would become this fragile flesh and bone, a breath close reminder that we are never alone? God of amazing grace, we gather hearts in our mouth to praise you. 
gather wanting to give you the best that is in us and trust you will forgive the worst. For we gather in Jesus' name and dare to pray we find you near, your heart, our own. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able as we sing together the first of this morning's hymns, number 202, Stand Up and Bless the Lord, hymn 202. join together in our prayers of thanks and unburdening and we say together the Lord's Prayer which you can find on the back of the service sheet but do say it in whatever form you know. Let us pray. Lord God our way we bless your glorious name for you are firm ground beneath our feet when all else is shifting. You, Lord, are light in the darkness we sometimes feel. Lord, God, our way, we bless your glorious name. Lord, God, our truth, Hear your people's praise. For you are the questioner from whom all our questions come. You are the silence in whom our careful creeds, our easy excuses come undone. Lord, God our truth, hear your people's praise. Lord God, our life, high above all praise. You are the joy that runs to meet us when we feel worn down. You are the love that surrounds us when fear is full and patience thin. Lord, our God, our life, you are high above all praise. 
astonishing God, our way, our truth, our life. We rise to bless your name even as we ask your forgiveness for the bad we have said, thought and done, for the good we have left unsaid, unthought, undone. Forgive us, Lord, and guide us as we pray to live a better way freed from fear, freed for faith. In the spirit of Christ, who showed how full, how complete your forgiveness, and who taught us to pray in words such as we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. How are we doing today? Are we good? <laughs> good. Have you noticed? I, I don't like to say it in case I jinx it, but I kind of just want to celebrate. This is our fourth day of sunshine in a row. <laughs> That's worth saying thank you for, isn't it? We had a barbecue the other night and we didn't even need our umbrellas. Glorious. A Saturday in the sun. Maybe some of you Enjoyed a Saturday in the sun yesterday. Did anyone do anything nice? I was here at a wedding, and that was a lot, and some others were too, and that was a lovely thing to be out in the garden watching everybody coming in. Did anyone else do anything nice? I hear whispers. Just whispers. You can tell each other off it. Some of you will maybe tell me later. You know what I used to do on Saturdays when I was young? You're supposed to say you're still young. <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> um, actually, I have a picture. Maybe I've told you this before. I'm not sure. I'll bring it over here. This is what I used to do on Saturdays. Well, I mean, I didn't do this. I went to watch this. <laughs> do you recognize these people? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness, says Sheila. Yeah, Saturdays for me were watching wrestling. <laughs> You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it now, would you? <laughs> that, that was Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks for people that couldn't see. It was in black and white, which has nothing to do with my age. It's an artistic decision of the photographer. <laughs> now, on Saturdays, I used to go with my cousin um, to the forum in Livingston to watch wrestling. And if you were really lucky, you got to see the top of the bill of bouts, which was Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks, Shirley Crabtree and Martin Ruin, I think, are their real names. Was I the only one watching those things in those days? <laughs> Maybe? No. <laughs> Other people liked it too. The thing is, I was a bit of a devotee. I had the sweatbands. It was the 80s. <laughs> and I used to linger in between matches because there was always a few in the one afternoon um, collecting autographs of the wrestlers. But I think my collection was a little bit different to other people's. The wrestling matches I grew up with were a classic case of goodies versus baddies. Big Daddy was the ultimate goodie in Giant Haystacks, the one that we were... Um, loving to hate. But I used to watch them after their matches, the goodies and the baddies, and there'd be a big line of people wanting the autographs of the baddies, or the goodies rather. 
and nobody in the queue for the baddies. And they'd be sat on the step, looking really dejected. And so I would go, an audience of one, <laughs> asking, can I have your autograph, please? <laughs> It's interesting, thank you to the choir and Roddy for beginning worship today, but interesting that you sung Who's on the Lord's Side, because it's kind of a thread underlying this service today. Does God have a side? And if he does have a side or a bias, what is it? And how is it expressed by God? How is it expressed in our lives? Because well, life is a bit more complex than goodies and baddies, isn't it? I think even as a kid, I knew in my gut that victors can be losers. Losers, despite ex appearances, sometimes hold the higher ground. Those we think of as different in some way are, when it comes down to it, the same bag of flesh and fear as everyone else. Shortly, we're going to listen to a song of victory. It's sung by a woman called Miriam. And bold and prophetic and faithful as she is, we might want to ask questions about the appropriateness of her song. And then there's a portion of a letter from the Apostle Paul to the young churches in Philippi, which is so full of love for people for whom there has been some sort of conflict. Paul is committed to making flesh his faith, urging everyone else to do the same and to work together. But before we get to these and before we sing, we turn to another group of people here who are known for working together for good. I forgot to put it in the service sheet today, but today we um, have for the guild dedication and members of the guild are here not all of them but some as they often are today they come to be dedicated or perhaps to rededicate themselves to another year of serving within the guild the guild for those who are not familiar with it is a movement within the church of scotland that invites and encourages men and women to commit their lives to Jesus Christ and enables them to express their faith in prayer and worship and action. Today's fun fact, the Guild has around 15,000 members and is one of Scotland's largest voluntary organisations. If you are a member of the Guild here at Dorna Cathedral and would like to be dedicated and to rededicate yourself as the new year unfolds, will you please stand where you are? Thank you. And let us pray together. Lord, we stand together now as members of the Church of Scotland Guild, thanking you for friendship found, for hearts made whole, for lives lived less alone. Thank you for horizons broadened, for the desire to serve strengthened, for time and talents so freely offered. Lord, we ask your blessing on each member as they recommit themselves to Jesus Christ and make flesh their faith in worship and prayer and loving action. We, find, we ask that those who lead might find many reasons to feel encouraged. And we pray help might always be found, even when it is not asked for. Lord, we pray for those who perhaps, because of poor health, are unable to take their part for now, and we ask that ways be found to include them. And we pray, loving God, just as there is always room in your kingdom, so there might always be room for one more. Surely, you will bless us beyond all we can imagine or ask for. 
For you are the God who makes of wee seeds mighty trees. And so it will be. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'll ask you to be seated and perhaps it's a good moment to thank the guild um, for everything they do and for the various ways they share their faith in the community and around the world. Thank you. We're going to sing. Um, it's a hymn that I've never sung before. I don't know if you have. Maybe it's an opportunity to learn something new. And it's a little nod to the reading from Exodus where Miriam and Moses sing a song of praise to God. So it's hymn 126, Let's Sing to the Lord. And I think, Roddy, is, you're going you're gonna to play it through so we can follow the words and have a good listen. Thank you. I hope you can both see and hear me this morning. Good. The reading is taken from Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 to 11, and verses 20 to 21. In the Pew Bible, it can be found on page 71, but I'm reading from the New International Version. This is the song of Moses and Miriam. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. 
The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood up like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue, I will overtake them, I will divide the spoils, I will gorge myself on them, I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? Then Miriam, the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The second reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Excuse me a minute. And it's found on page 250 of the Pew Bible. And again, I'm reading from the New International Version. It's Paul's closing appeal for steadfastness and unity. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Euodia and I plead with Sintiki to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women, since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Debbie. Come now to our prayers for comfort and reassurance, prayers for people for whom there is need today. Um, and as we do that, we just um, share a notice that we forgot about, which was to thank everyone for attending 
um, the community lunch last week. We had a, a, me a meal um, prepared by the women's group and with our Ukrainian friends, so we were able to enjoy Ukrainian food and spend time together and get to know um, Yulia and others a little more. And in the course of that, um, £969 was raised for the Church of Scotland's partners in Hungary um, and beyond. So a um, massive, massive thank you to the women's group who worked incredibly hard. Um, and thank you to everyone who came along and everyone who um, made a donation. And let's come to God now in prayer. Lord, we don't need to tell you of the over and again pain we feel. You know it in us, you feel it in yourself. And your heart breaks when our hearts are sore. The hurt we cause one another knowingly or without meaning to. The destruction we wreak upon the earth and can't seem to find the will to stop. Lord, we don't need to tell you of the sorrow we feel. We do so as a token of our trust in you and because we do want to try to be your hands and feet, your heart of compassion, bringing hope and healing to the earth and to those who are hurting. Lord, we pray today for Ukraine. We thank you for the opportunity to try to make a difference. We pray for those fleeing and far from home, seeking safety. For men separated from their families. For women raising their children in strange lands. For volunteers caring for left behind ones to ill too frail to escape. For neighbours, people who have lost so much, whose only home is each other. Lord, for all those for whom life will never be the same, we pray knowledge of your care and in time, courage to rebuild their lives one step and stone at a time, each supporting the other. We pray also for Eritrea and Algeria, for Israel and Palestine, for Gabor and Afghanistan. So many of the places where there is conflict, we pray paths to peace be found and soon we pray the babble of children be a familiar sound, the buzz of the commute in the streets a familiar sight. We pray the wonderful predictability, the ordinariness of daily life be a familiar way. We pray too today, Lord, for those we know, friends, family, neighbours, those whose need we long to take away or somehow bear for them. Come to them, Lord, we pray. Cover them with your loving presence till lost smiles are found and peace is restored and life known in all its fullness. Lord, perhaps we can also pray today for your church, especially this church and those with whom it is uniting. May there be listening. May there be understanding. May there be imagination. Lord, may there be a growing as together we listen for your voice and follow where you lead for the kingdom's sake. Amen. We 
sing together again hymn 189, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. These are the women we seek to bring alive as we think on today's readings from Exodus and Philippians. To be honest though, at first glance I find these women, the way these women are mentioned to be, a bit disappointing. They are of the blink and miss it variety. I want to know more. And secondly, I'm not sure the women, Miriam in particular, are painted in an entirely positive light. But perhaps that is a thought to be thankful for. There is an honesty to what we read, a like it or not reality, which to me just makes the words and the people written about or written to all the more real, all the more like us. In Exodus, we're met with a long song of praise attributed to Moses and a shorter song, a chorus maybe, with Miriam's name attached to it. Together, this song is thought to be one of the oldest texts in the whole of Scripture. Some have argued that all of it, verse and chorus, belongs to Miriam. The implication being I think that a redactor or editor has felt a need to balance the scales in a particular way. But even taking the text as it is given to us today, pieced together with what we've been learning about her, that's enough for us to begin to bring alive Miriam, this courageous, canny woman. We met her a week or two ago She was there, hiding in the rushes by the river, watching her mother float her baby brother in a basket on the river, waiting to see what would happen to her, to him. 
The family were among Hebrew people, held in captivity in Egypt by a king intent on wiping them out, instructing the midwives to murder any baby boys born to Hebrew women. Moses, the baby in the basket, floats almost in the direction of the king's daughter, who's come to the river to bathe. When the king's daughter notices the baby, when Moses' older sister Miriam notices the woman's compassion, Miriam emerges from her waiting, offering to find a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for now. Pharaoh's daughter assents, and Miriam, brave and resourceful Miriam, calls her own mother as nurse, restoring Moses to their mother and in the process her family to each other. Today we meet her back beside water, singing the song of the sea. Her people have escaped at last from Pharaoh and Miriam sings to God about how God has triumphed gloriously, throwing their captors turned pursuers into the water. Amazingly, Miriam and the other women though fleeing, have brought instruments, tambourines, an act of faith in itself perhaps, a sign of their trust in God who would surely one day deliver them to freedom and to safety. And they dance, for the day is here. But strange to think that the girl who so relied on the compassion of an Egyptian woman those years ago can feel so little compassion for those Egyptian women and children who would soon hear news of what had happened and find themselves widows and orphans. But here is a like it or not reality. Today, in this moment, She is just glad to be free, glad to give all praise to God. Miriam is the first woman named as a prophet in the Bible, perhaps because she speaks out loud what she believes to be true. God really is on the side of the poor and the captive. I find it helpful sometimes to think of scripture as a story of a people's developing understanding of themselves and of God. Which is why perhaps there is disagreement in scripture about what that bias in the heart of God really looks like and how it's expressed. For Miriam, that bias was nothing short of overwhelming force on behalf of the people. Of course, Centuries later, God, scripture reveals, would sneak into an unsuspecting world, put on flesh and sinew and bone, and will those who followed his way to love their enemies and pray for those who persecute them. An altogether more complex prophetic word. And here is the Apostle Paul near the end of his letter to the young church in Philippi, urging Judea and Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. The women are in a situation where there is conflict, whether it's between themselves or together against Paul is less than clear. What we do know is that these women are leaders in the church in Philippi. Paul talks of them struggling beside him in the work of the gospel, naming them as co-workers. Paul writes out of love, love for Christ and love for them. My brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, he says, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Whatever the disagreement that has gone on, whether the women are arguing themselves or whether Paul is rather pointedly telling the church in Philippi to follow the way of the Lord they see in him 
a knot in these leaders. He speaks to them evenly. He doesn't take sides. He uses the same careful choice of words with each, imploring with them to be in the same mind as each other, as him, as and in the Lord. If there is any bias here, it is toward unity. Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen. And the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, whose way is peace, draw us together in you, we pray. May we here today be one heart, one mind, seeking another's good always, rejoicing together in the joy of the gospel. And if there is any bias in us, let it be for those who feel lost and least. We will weep with the sore and laugh with the found. And we pray May all that we give of ourselves and the gifts you give us, even the offering we make today, be for the world's good and always and ever for your glory. Amen. I always forget to say that there are teas and coffees after the service. There are teas and coffees after the service. Thank you to those who've worked hard to provide them. Um, And please stay, whether you're just here today or here often, you're very, very welcome. Um, Take that time to get to know each other and to keep on chatting. We're going to close our worship by singing another song of praise of victory. Thine be the glory. It's hymn number 419. And it makes me ask the question, what is, it, what is it to be, as we sing in that final verse, more than conquerors? Hymn 419.
and to heal, go to forgive and to grow. The blessing of God, source, saviour, spirit, is with you for now and for always. Thank you.